So a lot of this work actually focuses a lot on, you know, just where the country is at this point, um, with a lot of issues around, um, around who owns the land, basically, um, which then goes back to colonization. Um, and the surname thing goes back to issues of language, which goes back to colonization. Lebhang Khanye from South Africa, Johannesburg. I'm a photographer, um, but I also work in installation. Um, and for this exhibition, I would be presenting one of my installations, Mushoko Medua Tora, um, which basically in Sesotho means lighthouse keeper. Um, and I suppose the title comes from my investigation around my family surname or my family name. Um, which is Khanye, which means light. Um, so I've been investigating the origin of the surname and how it changed over the years um, because it's spelled in four different ways. Um, so a lot of my work has basically started with that investigation, um, with me traveling around South Africa, um, trying to locate my family, family members I'd never met before, um, and trying to find out how it changed as they moved to the different farms that they lived on, um, the reasons that they moved, um, and how they ended up in the city. So a lot of um, the work that I've been working around has been um, around the surname and around that investigation. And, you know, while on the journey, obviously, besides collecting all of these oral histories and these stories about my family, um, but I've also collected a lot of photographs um, which were taken in different places that they lived, different farms that they lived. But most of them are actually taken um, you know, when they started living in the city, when they had more access to photography. So a lot of the material that I use is actually for my family photo albums. Um, and it's stories that I, that I collect from my family. Um, so I've been thinking about this idea of photography attesting for truth um, and also how you know, it stands in for a memory, um, but actually, you know, I've been thinking about the fact that it also largely stands in for a fantasy. Um, like, for example, when I, um, so about two years after my mother passed away, I, I started going through our family photo albums, and, and then I was just realizing the fact that with all the photos that we have of her, she was always dressed up, um, looking very elegant, um, but this was someone who worked as a factory worker since she was in her 20s. So, and there's no record of her um, in terms of the photo albums, um, in terms of her being a factory worker. Um, so it's almost like these photographs where she's dressed up and she's you know, very elegant looking, um, have outlived her and that's become a memory of her. But that's not her reality, that wasn't her reality. So she dressed up for the photographs. Um, so I just started to think about how these archives that come to represent us and that outlive us actually are very fantastical and are very far from our reality. Um, but also how these oral histories are similar to that, how um, in as much as they can be sort of record of the truth and the history, but to a large degree, um, it's, it's also quite fantastical. So, so in a way, um, this installation, Mishloko Medua Tora, is, um, becomes like, a, in a way, like a storybook, um, because I'm also quite interested in, in literature and African literature, but in children's storybooks. Um, so it becomes almost, so it brings in those, those elements where um, I, I interpret the photo album as a sort of storybook um, that, you know, like a fairy tale. So um, it's got all of these fantastical elements, even though it's got, it's meant to have moral stories um, that go with it. Um, so, so this installation in a way becomes like a, a pop-up book um, that's, you know, that's life size. Um, that's my family's story. So the scenes that I decide to work with, because there are many and many stories that, that, that I've um, that I've collected from my family, um, but a lot of them are like ones where they're so significant to to the person that's telling me the story, um, and a lot of the ones that get repeated by a lot of family members. Um, so I then decide to to work with those. Um, but I'm also at a point where I'm, I'm including a lot of the the recordings into the installations and or into the 
um, the exhibitions as well, um, just not for this particular installation. I mean, but it's also got a lot to do with um, just wanting to tell our own stories um, because, you know, like, as I said, that a lot of our stories are, it's oral, so they aren't. Um, and for example, with surnames, surnames are very political. So, um, so that research on its own has been very interesting, just in terms of thinking about South Africa and South Africa's history um, and thinking about our land politics and land ownership. Um, so a lot of this work actually focuses a lot on, you know, just where the country is at this point, um, with a lot of issues around, um, around who owns the land, basically, um, which then goes back to colonization. Um, and the surname thing goes back to issues of language, which goes back to colonization. Um, so so it, in that sense, it's very much not just my family history, but it's a, it's a South African history.